Hey everybody, Scout Crafter here again. Uh, you know, when I was growing up, uh, my dad was an oil truck driver. We didn't have a lot of money. Everything was kind of frugal in my house. But um, two things he never busted my chops over buying was tools and books. So I can come home and I could say, ah, oh, this tool was expensive. He was like, yeah, well, that's money well spent. Whereas if I bought something shiny for the car, he'd say, what are you wasting your money on that for? So. Uh, but in, in thinking about that, I have something to show you today, probably one of the greatest books I've ever found. I want to show it to you. Now, when I was a kid, the catalog was king. I mean, if you wanted to look up something, you would just get the Sears catalog or whatnot and look it up. And uh, they also had industrial catalogs like this or whatever. But this is, you know, kids today, I mean, the Internet is great, but you miss out on so many things uh when you you hold a book and you look through a book and you can uh it's it's just a different feel and i feel bad because uh you know you miss out on all that and um neil laville uh has a uh, supply house and out of louisville kentucky and um they're still in business and this is from 1942 this book it's uh their red book number eight 1942 and uh, you could see it's a it's a large book, and this is uh, what you would go if you wanted to look for certain supplies and whatnot. And remember, 1942, a car was $1,100, gas was 19 cents a gallon, and uh, the minimum wage was 30 cents an hour. So picture that, okay? 30 cents an hour. Now let me show you what's so beautiful about a book like this. When you went in there and you want to look for something, you see this center section here with all these uh, thumb cutouts. Well, the index here is marked off in black. You can see it says index. And what you would do is you would put your thumb here, flip it open to the middle, and here was your sectional index. Now, this is why it's so great. I mean, so quick, so easy. No batteries required, no plug-in. Let's say we want to look up screws, bolts, expands, or whatever, nuts, whatever. You put your thumb right, your finger right here, and there you're in the, the section for screws, nuts, or whatever. Now, we just did a project uh, yesterday on Tom's uh, screw. Here was this Phyllis the Head screw. If you want to get it, you can get the uh, the size and all the prices we're here and whatnot. And every kind of screw, every kind of uh, uh, nut and bolt that you can imagine. And uh, these are 1942 prices. And the reason I love this kind of book so much is because when I do all tools... Uh, and I'm looking for a certain type of tool, like let's say, you know, I have a tool like this that I'm looking at, and I say, oh, geez, I wonder what that cost when it was new. Well, you would go here, it says miscellaneous small tools, blacksmith's tools, punches, shears, things like that. Go to this area and flip it over. Now, the first thing you'll notice, here's, a, a, here's those bolt cutters that uh, Steve gave to the, the channel, and you could see the prices, what these were back then. Uh, you would look up the size. They had swivel head, they had regular head, they had, uh, and these were, here we go, 42 inches, and these were $15. And uh, that was a lot of money back then. Think about that. Remember, 30 cents an hour was minimum wage, so $15 was uh, a lot of money for those. But um, if we were looking for that tool, we were looking at, you know, you would just go down to, I guess, your clamp area or vice area, and uh, now we're in chucks and uh, just keep working your way down. And see here we start getting into the clamps and this is uh, where you would find a tool like that. Here's uh, some C clamps we were talking about. Now these are the price per dozen. Uh, the 540, the, uh, the standard clamps that we've done before and you could see uh, the price here at uh, per dozen was $9.00. Nine dollars for a dozen, uh, for two and a half. For the four-inch size, it was twelve dollars a dozen. So it was a dollar each for those clamps in 1942, and I can't even get them for that price now. Uh, they had some ads in between the sections, but the, uh, here we go. Here's the Miller's Falls hand vise. You could see there, right? And uh, this is the one that we were looking at. You could see, and you could see the price here was two dollars and twenty cents for that particular. Uh, for that particular tool back then which you know it seems cheap but when you think about it here's regular vices like reed vices and you could get a uh uh a ten in, a ten dollars for a, a number 103 reed machinist vice so when you think about that it was pretty expensive when you could get a full bench vice for ten dollars and you were paying two dollars and twenty cents for a hand vice 
Now, I guess what I find so interesting about these catalogs is you can see what cost a lot, but hardware was really inexpensive, like nuts and screws. You can buy, you know, a gross for 50 cents, but some of the other things were more expensive. Um, for example, let's go over here to uh, lumbering tools, jacks, you know, again, we just flip it over here and you could see like shovels and, and, and things like that here. Here we have our, our shovel index. Now, what's funny is when you look over here, uh, it was like a, a regular shovel was uh, $21 a dozen, you know, so shovels were dirt cheap, back then. <laughs> uh, literally, I mean, you can get obviously handles, replacement handles and whatnot, but uh, just always, I find it really interesting at, at the prices of what certain things went for as compared to, uh, as today, you know, uh, hand trucks and, and you look at these. And you say, you think, wow, look at them old hand trucks. But remember, these were brand new at the time. These were the newest designs, you know, with the steel wheels. And they were made to last. And these old dollies and, and things like that that you would see. Uh, here's that uh, sc locomotive screw jack that we saw at the show the other day. And you can see here, uh, you know, they ran about $5, uh, $10, depending on the size. But um it's I'm, I'm always amazed at the prices of what things were and and these old catalogs what you could pick up if you wanted to do blacksmithing now blacksmithing i always found amazing because you could buy blacksmithing supplies here look at the anvils here and uh you could see here you could buy a 90 pound anvil for 15 dollars and you could buy a 250 pound anvil a number 25 for 40 dollars uh, and again, that was a lot of money back then, but nothing like it is today. Look at this. You can get a light forge, which I have one of these, uh, the forge with the blower for $10.50. And and uh, and they had different size forge. You could buy coal by the sack, 100-pound sacks. Or um, here's another a light portable forge that you can get for $30. And, you know, all you for maybe $100, you could set yourself up with a whole blacksmith uh, a shop. Now, remember, I was telling you certain things were uh, cheap, very cheap, but a lot of things are expensive. Now, here's an example of something that's... Now, here's a big... You can see the size of this. A big Craftsman drill. And I'll show you here. You can see the specs on this. And let's look up what a compatible drill in that catalog. Now, here we are with some compatible drills. These are Black & Decker, but a lot of times they were made by Black & Decker for Craftsman back then. And they look almost identical. But these type of drills, they start at $60 and go up to $100, depending on the uh, RPMs or the chuck size. And remember, they were making $2,000 a year. So that's like $125 a month. And at $125 a month, this the lowest price drill, that was a two-week salary. So that's the way I always get a kick out of looking at this, how much it cost in time. Another thing I find interesting, and here we were talking about yesterday's uh, screw pitch gauges. You know, this is brown and sharp. They were a big competitive with Starrett. So depending on where you were in the country, some uh, some catalogs like this one had mostly brown and sharp stuff compared to uh, Starrett and from other parts of the area, like the East Coast. And over here, you can see they were $1.25 or $1.50 for the screw pitch gauge and other machining tools that they had that were readily available and uh, they all nothing's changed much in the machinist industry as far as these but uh, these were expensive too that you know the test indicators at $25 um, the small machinist vice and V blocks that we were talking about but these were only $2.75 but uh, here was a set for $6.75 that was a lot of money back then when you think about as, as a day salary or whatnot and um, so always very interesting things to see what things cost back then and what how uh, important uh, machinists would treat their tools because of certain things costing so much as compared to today when you could get a lot of Chinese knockoffs and whatnot so cheap. Here we have some of the Miller's Falls uh, dress, uh, breast drills that we have and we'll be restoring very sh soon. Or oh, we have some... Uh, uh, ratcheting uh, screwdrivers and they were cheap too these were three dollars and fifteen cents each these were two dollars and forty cents each and again it's cheap by our standards uh, our screwdrivers that we like to restore uh, it's funny how when you look at these some of these things have never changed you know some look exactly the same but the front of this catalog had a full uh, index so if you did have to look up something uh, individually you did have the full index up front but this quick index in the middle really made things much easier anyway that was just a uh, demonstration of this great little book 
And uh, if you ever get a chance to pick up an industrial book, uh, especially at a flea market or something, these things do go for a lot of money. Uh, this thing was fifty dollars, uh, and but if you find one and it's in decent shape, pick it up. They do make good collectors' items and are fun to look at. Just something else, and uh, I hope you're having a good day. Take care. Thanks very much.